Uh, hello, I'm Carolyn. Nice to Marvel Report. Nice Hi, to Emily. meet you. Nice to meet you. Olivia. Hi. Nice to meet you. Olivia. Hi. Hey, nice to meet you. Ariella. 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 And Project Family. Wonderful to meet you. Nice to meet you guys too. Excellent. This is, this is awesome. So I'm just going to kick things off. We're going a little soon. I'm just going to kick things off and say, uh, awesome to meet you both and uh, this whole panel was really about interacting the, the, the relationship between the behind the scenes camera and how you guys build worlds can maybe each one of you one of you guys give us a sentence about how important the behind the scenes people are to you guys in front of the camera like the sentence or well you know hair and makeup and costumes play such a huge role in creating the world in Star Trek and you know my prosthetic instantly puts me into character so I work really close with, with my makeup team and hair team and the costumes um, to make that feel great for me and the world and, yeah. yeah I guess like in a bad metaphor it's like an iceberg where like you see the top for every like foot that's above the surface there's 10 feet below and like we as actors what you see on screen is like the tiniest fraction of the work that's gone into it and everything is so motivated and deep and with so much passion in it that it's great to just hear the behind the scenes of that. Cool. Yeah, and kind of following up on that, are there any memorable moments on set, kind of collaborating with these people, or even if it's not on set, kind of unique moments that you kind of... Funny stories, funny stories. Well, the day they told me that I was going to shave my head was a funny story, because <laughs> it wasn't funny at all. <laughs> uh, no, I was happy to do it, but Ryan, um, the hair guy, he was put a little side ponytail in and just chopped it off and I was, you know, freaking out as uh, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it was nerve wracking. Cool. Yeah. Real. Yeah. And then I heard the and I was like, okay, it's happening. That's not something that'll grow back evenly. Yeah. It's not just like buzzing. Yeah. You're a sharp woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I know, I've talked a lot I wrote a song with Sid for the show, but that's not funny. <laughs> I've told that story. But I also I had to change my hair. I dyed my hair purple for the first episode. And I was actually that in my head is what helped me get the part. I don't think it really did, but I had dyed my hair before purple when I was 16. So after I tested for the role, I was literally emailing the producers of every picture I could find of myself with purple hair. And I was like, I'll do it, I'll do it for you. Um, so we did it, and the day of, the makeup artist walks in, and she was like, hi, I'm Joni, I'm, I'm head of makeup department. And I was like, great, what are you doing here? And she was just like, well, I'm gonna bleach your eyebrows. <laughs> with, I was like, oh no, you're not. And she was like, well, let's leave it on five minutes, we'll see how it goes, we'll just figure it out. <laughs> and she just put it right on my face, and I was like, well, I guess if I don't want to go blind, I'm going to keep this on for five minutes and see how it goes. <laughs> so you, your show's set in space, so that kind of makes it easy to like just get into character. Your show's set in L.A. Uh, what makes like L.A., Runaways L.A. different from L.A.? LA? <laughs> I think the beauty is that it's not. It's like, I mean, there's some lines sprinkled in that it's just like everyone who's been in L.A. longer for, longer than like five years, you've just like... I, one line I'll never get over is when someone freaks out on a teacher, like violently, like super villain levels, and the teacher just goes, Brentwood parents. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, that's, L it is exactly the LA. And I think one of the things about Runaways is how grounded they try to make it for real. And while LA is this kind of out of this world, real city, it's still, to ground it in that reality, I think is a lot of the show. You guys do a lot with diversity and inclusion, and your, both of your shows are all about these characters. Both of your shows have LGBT relationships, which I firmly appreciate, and both of your shows have these, char these unconventional characters that um, exist in these worlds. What is it like to be on the forefront of these shows that are bringing these like inclusive, diverse storylines? I mean, you're like you're Latin, you're Latinx, yeah. okay. Yeah. And then like you guys are working with all of these things. Like, what is it like to be doing that? Can you talk about like your your personal, maybe personal, like how do you feel? How are you feeling? I feel so incredibly lucky to be a part of a show that's, you know, pushing boundaries, but really just going, hey, this is normal, this is happening, I don't know what the big deal is, our showrunners, Aaron and Gretchen, are incredible for that. Um, they just want to tell great stories and have great characters who, you know, aren't uh, shown as much as they should be, so I feel like very excited and, and proud of what we're doing with the show. Awesome.
box. So, yeah, I mean, the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a softball question, but honestly, I'm compiling more in my head. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you're both kind of um, on shows that have a really devoted fan base, whether it's, it be previously or kind of like comic books and kind of all this lore. Do you do any background research, kind of contextualization for your characters and kind of for the world that you're living in? Yeah, I mean, for mine, we didn't know what we were auditioning for. Marvel kept it so secret. I heard a rumor it might be a Marvel show as I was auditioning, but I really didn't know, which I think allowed for a lot of freedom to explore the character without any like preconceived notions. But then, of course, the second I knew what it was, I went and I researched her extensively, and I just thought who she was as a character is so powerful, and, and it was really nice to be able to read her from an outside perspective and and then also explore that within myself and I feel like everything she overcomes and every empowering moment she had became something for me as well and and it was exciting to know that then I could bring that without it like into the world. Yeah and for me I was traveling when I got the call and I was had this like great week planned in Paris and I really just sat in my hotel room and watched Star Trek the whole time because <laughs> I was like I have a lot of uh, you know content to get through years and years of history and legacy. Um, you guys have also very visual effects heavy shows. Mm -hmm. How is that acting sometimes with nothing there or nothing but like a ball? Yeah, <laughs> yeah the dinosaur is huge. Well, the dinosaur is a robot that they made. It's insane. It's Sometimes it is just like a ball or, or nothing, depending on how much action it's doing. But the, the robot is incredible. I mean, it's... It, you know it's a robot, but it alone is so impressive. It might as well be a dinosaur when you're looking at it. it I mean, it's. It, I don't think I'll ever experience anything like that again. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of staring at a green screen, pretending it's space. That's what I do every day on set. So you know, you just have to let your imagination kind of take you where it needs to go. So um, we got the wrap-up signal, but I'm just gonna. Um, I'm gonna do one more softball. Sorry. Uh, do you guys, what would be Gertrude's favorite ride at Disneyland? <laughs> you guys both, both your characters, favorite yeah. ride at Disneyland. I feel like I can answer yours before mine. What, what's mine? You, you can answer mine and I'll answer yours. Star Tours. There we go. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> and yours would be Jurassic Park, no? Oh, like some, some yeah, kind of it's amusement park. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Jurassic All right. Park theme yeah. ride. There we go. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Get a little perspective. So, do, yeah, sure. I don't know if this is also kind of a general... I don't know, I mean, you're so immersed in kind of your shows, but do you have any other media that you've been really interested in lately, whether it be movies, TV, music, anything really at all? I mean, we're both musicians. Yeah, yeah. I mean, stuff we're watching? Just anything, really, that you're really Yeah, doing. I've been creating a digital series for a couple of years, and um, it's a comedy set in the 90s about door-to-door -door beauty sales, so I've just been sort of immersing myself <laughs> in 90s culture um, and music. Um, Called BD and May. Check it out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been I've been writing a lot too. I have. I was going to direct a couple shorts I'd written on our hiatus, but other work came up in the meantime. So next year, direct an episode. <laughs> wow. yeah. Marvel we'll has some crazy rules about that. I've researched. I've looked into it. Um, you have to have like directed three episodes of a TV show before they can let you. Oh. It's something like that. So I'll just stick to short films and movies. But yeah, I think I think next year that might be the project. Awesome. Thanks. Nice. So cool. Great to meet you guys. Thanks. Yeah, nice to meet you. That was yes. fun. Thank, Thank you. you. You guys I are awesome. You have to say goodbye to all of Me too. <laughs> <laughs> it was sad. I got a question once in an interview that was like, did you really think she was going to go? Like, was that upsetting? And I was like, no, that was the most expensive prop on set. They're not getting rid of that. <laughs> but I didn't say that. That's not recorded. <laughs> awesome. You guys are so great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.